Mark Crandall here of Purpose Chasers Podcast, a podcast designed to provide insights to empower individuals to break free from mediocrity and live extraordinarily. I'm so happy that you're tuning in and I hope you find great value in this podcast for you and those to come. Enjoy. So this episode of Purpose Chasers podcast, we have Pete Marston with us. Pete has been a friend of mine for, I don't know, how long, Pete? Like eight, nine years? Yeah. And I've watched... Over eight years, yeah. Yeah, over eight years. I've watched Pete go from uh, working for a heating and cooling company to building uh, a little mini empire. And it's it's just such a blessing to, to have you in my life, Pete. I know I've said that to you before. I just want to express the gratitude that I have and the amount of impact that you've had on my own life. Um, just watching you and knowing you has pushed me to a level that I didn't even know existed. And uh, I consider you a close friend of mine and uh, want, you know, a mentor and a, you, you're just in my circle of influence, which is really, really tight. And so Pete, when I hit him with the, the intro questions, which I do all of my interviews, he, he, I asked in in the, what direction do you want to head with the podcast? He, he stumped me a little and I'm going to have goosebumps again. Cause I had him when I, when I read it and I had him when I briefed him on this, this podcast interview and I asked him what direction he wanted to go. And he said, I want, (laughs) he, he wrote and I quote, creating the life you desire and crave through setting intentions reciting affirmations, journaling, goal setting, and visualization, and overcoming self-internal dialogue and smashing belief systems that no longer serve you. And I just got goosebumps again. That's all I've ever wanted in life. I mean, you need to write a book on exactly how to do that. I know a lot of people, a lot of people have dropped little snippets of that, but no one's ever compiled it. And, uh, and it rings true to me because I am, I am living the life that I desire and crave. And I know you are as well, Pete. So can you touch on that a little bit? Maybe how this has impacted you and what exactly creating the life you desire and crave means? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. You see the smile on my face? Uh, you've humbled me with your words you know, in that intro. And I, I uh, appreciate you as my friend and and also being a part of my circle of influence. So um, I'm honored to be on your show with you. And and, um, yeah, I'm humbled. Um, When it comes to, you know, living a life of intention and being, being purposeful and creating the life that you desire for me, what that, what it comes down to is um, being really surgical and tactical with the habits that I employ on a daily basis. Um, so in that little write up there, I talked about setting goals, journaling, personal growth and development, taking actions, um, that promote growth and stretch me out of my comfort zone. But the key point of all of it is the goals, the goals that I set. And it's not so much about, you know, achieving the goals that, that I desire. It's more about who I become in the process of of chasing down these goals and dreams. And you talk about it too. Um, not living a life of mediocrity. I, you know, I I don't even want to say that I lived a life of mediocrity, but for several years of my life, I was in this place of existence and I wasn't living. And then when my life radically changed through the, you know, um, the grace of a higher power, I decided early on that I did not want to live a life of mediocrity and I was going to, live the life and create the life that I wanted to. So what did that look like? T- almost 10 years ago, I started to, to set goals and I had never set goals before ever. Um, and you know, what happened was I started to achieve these goals, right? Like they were simple, really simple. And I could, I could touch on them and tell you what they were still. I remember some of them and they came true, right? Like getting certain jobs, making a certain amount of money, buying certain vehicles, taking certain vacations, stuff like that, being really specific. 
one of the one of the vehicles to achievement for me was the words in which I used internal dialogue and external dialogue. And when I say internal dialogue, that we all talk inside, right? We've got this internal dialogue. We don't have control over it sometimes. Sometimes we do. So I would do my external dialogue. Would f- I would focus on positive affirmations and I would read positive affirmations enthusiastically in the mirror. And I would start to externally, you know, speak these things into existence. Mm-hmm. But I have an internal dialogue as well. And that internal dialogue sometimes is not so nice, right? <laughs> sometimes it, it, it's, it says negative things about myself. It, it strips down my self-esteem. I get stuck. I get stuck in, um, you know, morbid reflection or what other people think of me. So I have to battle those thoughts externally with the affirmations. And I still do this stuff and internally because those thoughts come up and the way I do it is I become aware of them. And then I immediately make a conscious choice to change that thought. Um, and I'll give you a quick example. I'm in the process of selling a home, um, that I bought seven years ago and I, ha- I got a full price offer on the house and, you know, I, I did an addendum with the, with the buyers and I'm going back and forth with them and internally I'm going, they're going to back out. They're going to back out. I'm in the kitchen and I recognize these negative thought patterns. This is just an example of recent, recent, um, situation. I recognize these negative thought patterns and I make the decision to combat it with a positive internal dialogue. And I start to say to myself, I am easily and effortlessly going to sell this house. The transaction is going to progress forward seamlessly and everybody's going to be happy on both sides. And literally as I'm saying these things mentally, I get a text from my agent that says, just want to let you know you are 100% officially under contract as I'm saying them, right? So I attracted this positive news um, into the present moment. And stuff like that has happened throughout, you know, the past 10 years, um, whether it's in my personal life and relationships and business, uh, when I worked for other people. So the language that we use is, is so important. You know, it does. So you just said, you said something a minute ago that I can't get out of my head and I just want to drop it on this call. Um, you stated that the most important aspect of goal setting was, was the journey of of the goals. And I just got goosebumps again, which I do often, um, in, in this, in this world that we live, but Nick at the, the, the event that we just spoke at together, dropped some fire on me when so one of, when one of us was on the stage, obviously it wasn't him or I, but, and he said, you know, I was talking to him about my struggles in business and, uh, you know, my coaching business and, you know, I'm like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And all the goals that I were setting were a lot of them were monetary. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get this. And he, and he said something to me and all I could think of with well, this little coin that I got years ago given to me by someone. And it said, um, you know, life is a journey, not a destination. And so when you said that, I thought about something that I heard, um, somebody that I follow and listen to say that the greatest aspect of entrepreneurship for him was the man that he was becoming on the journey of getting to where he wants to go. Right. And so that really stuck for me. And so I've started to take that mindset of like, Oh my, you know what I mean? I've, my mentor has been telling me to start a podcast for like six, seven months now. And I'm like, oh, it's too hard. It takes too much work. I kept Googling and kept Googling it. And then finally, I said, you know what? I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to do my first interview tomorrow. And it was like, boom, I submitted it to iTunes. I submitted it to Google Play Store. And it was like, it was just there. So I know to a lot of the listeners or to some of the listeners, like what you just said may sound weird, may sound strange that you would just affirm that and then it would come into reality. But I can, I mean, we could spend the rest of the call talking about how those affirmations and the abundance mindset, applying that in your life actually produces that energy in your life. Oh, dude, it's crazy, right? What we focus on expands. What we think about 
comes true. When you say that, uh, I, I just thinking about over the last, I don't know, the, in your in your recent months, what are some kind of lessons or some takeaways that you've got in business? And then give us a, a, a intro, a brief intro on your business and what you're actually up to. Because I know what you're doing, but the listeners don't know the hustle that you're in. What What are some aspects of enjoying the journey and becoming a stronger person as a result of this entrepreneurship, spiritual life, transformational journey that we're on? Awesome. Awesome question. Real quick, before I jump into those questions, anybody that is listening that does think that this is like woo woo weird stuff. Awesome. That's great. I I thought it too. (laughs) (laughs) I would challenge anybody that's listening. That is maybe listening in a little bit of, you know, silent disbelief or some skepticism to set some goals and then look in the mirror, create some affirmations and recite those affirmations surrounding the goals with enthusiasm, with intent, and just do it for five days just a simple challenge and just see if, if just see how that feels and see what happens for you. That's all Gen- gentle, delicate challenge um, to answer your question. So as far as business goes, what I've noticed, the number one thing that I've noticed is my, my business. And this, this goes for uh, beyond my business. Um, the importance of health and the importance of diet and the importance of movement and exercise Um, I have a lot of experience eating really well. I have a lot of experience eating really poorly. I have experience running like crazy and working out like crazy. And, and when I am in a place of, you know, physical fitness that I'm practicing on a pretty, you know, regimented basis, everything seems to roll very smoothly. Like businesses is just, you know, full speed ahead, but smooth, my relationships, the same thing. So I think, you know, the most important thing is, you know, taking care of myself mentally, spiritually, and physically. Um, And when I'm, when I'm working those three areas, um, everything's great, right? Like I'm more, I'm more peaceful. I'm more positive. I'm a better leader. I'm a more effective communicator. Um, This, the second thing that I want to talk about as far as business goes is, I love the journey. I love the figuring it all out. I love the networking. I mean, I just love taking every single step. And I think what I really like, I'm figuring this out as I'm saying it, is I like being up against the wall, looking up, going, how am I going to get over this? How am I going to get over this mountain? Mm -hmm. How am I going to face this challenge and get around it? you know, and do it ethically and do it in a way where I can lead effectively. And, and touch, touch uh, on that a little bit, Pete. Cause I, I mean, I've been, I've only been in business for about two years now, but you just dropped on something that rings true with me. Cause I've been around some people in business that are doing things. And I'm like, Oh, that, that would be cool if I could sleep at night and do that. You know what I mean? So when you say ethically, I think about, am I going to be able to get a good night's sleep after this? Yeah. You know, um, I got a letter from the IRS yesterday and I'll tell you, like when I see the IRS on the top of the envelope, my heart doesn't go, Oh shoot. It just doesn't do it. You know why? Because in my heart and my soul, I have nothing to hide. So, um, you know, I guess the biggest thing for me ethically is keeping everything a hundred percent on the books. I mean, I'm a, I'm in a business where I, I own a heating and cooling company with my partner and brother, Tyler. And you know, we, the, the biggest thing for us, and you talked about this at the event, you can sleep at night, right? It's one thing that I never even knew that I wanted, but I want to be able to sleep well at night. Mm. And, um, you know, money is one of those things where it makes people act funny. You know, so I'm in a business where sometimes a customer will pay me $11,000 in cash, you know? Um, So when I say ethically, um, I mean, you know, showing the government the money that I make. Um, Every dollar is accounted for through our books. It's, It's not even a... The only way it could not be shown is if I were to, you know, delete a job that we did or something like that, which... So everything is tied into my QuickBooks and my accountant. So they just see every transaction that happens. 
So there's no, you know, there's no, there's no possibility of anything coming back on us saying, Hey, you're missing, you know, $40,000 and that you're sh- that you showed, but it's not in your bank account. Every dollar is accounted for. And last year that happened where, you know, we had gotten a lot of money in cash and, you know, I had, I had to tell, you know, the tax account said, Hey, just so you know, the cash that came in, what we did with every dollar is we split that up and this is how it went. So every dollar is accounted for. So ethically, I don't have to worry about anything coming back on me or Tyler or the business on the back end. And that's just one side of it financially. And the other sides of it are, you know, how am I treating my employees? Am I treating them fairly? Customers. One of the things that we try to do all around is we always want to work in the best interest of our customers. And I was asked recently with a new digital marketing company that we're working for, he said, what makes you different? I go, man, I hate this question. Every, every person I talk to, Oh, why you guys, what makes you different? And I gave him the answer that I give everybody. I said, um, we really pride ourselves on educating the customers. That's, that's like our number one focus. We want to give them a full understanding of how their equipment functions, how it operates, you know, what it means if something's not testing properly and just really educate them 360 degrees. So, you know, being ethical in business, um, there's phases to it. It's not just with the finances and making sure you're doing everything legitimately. So you don't have to, you won't have problems with the IRS. There's also that customer relationship aspect to it. You have, you know, employees and coworkers, there's ethics all the way around. It's full circle, you know? So, um, being a person that, you know, practices spiritual principles and would consider himself, you know, very principally centered. Um, I can't just be like, Oh, these nine areas of my life, I'm going to do everything really well, not perfectly, but my business, I'm going to be a little bit shady and not be principally centered here. It just doesn't work that way, you know? So, um, so yeah, I just got, I got to be ethical. I have to be. It's not, it's a, it's a non-negotiable. I've talked to you about non-negotiables in the past. It is a non-negotiable for me. And it's the, it's the same. It's the same for me. And it, it, I mean, it encompasses all aspects of my life. And, um, you know, I think about it in, in the world that I'm in where, you know, as, as my traction kind of grows, you know, I get asked to do things and I, you know, I get asked to, to coach people and speak at these events. And, um, I never just commit. I want to know what they're about. I want to know how they tick. I want to know the the main root of what I'm going to do before I go to do it because I'm not in business to make money. Obviously, it's the, it's the purpose of a business to make money, but I'm in business to serve people. That's why I'm in business to help people. It's a, it's the same foundation of this podcast. You know, this podcast that is is which is designed to provide insights to empower individuals to break free from the media mediocrity and, and live extraordinarily. You know what I mean? It's like that. So in, in tying this, this podcast together, cause I got direction that I needed to shorten these up cause people can't listen that long, which I don't know. I've listened, we talked about it before the call. I've listened to some long podcasts before. <laughs> I'm going to drop this question on you, Pete. What's next, dude? You state you stated in this 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 piece of writing that you put in the questionnaire caught my eye as well. I'm currently studying a variety of different things to help further my knowledge and mission on being a serial entrepreneur in recovery. What does it mean for you to be a serial entrepreneur? And I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for I'm asking for my listeners because I mean, I get, I see a fireworks stand now and I'm like, man, what's the, what's the return on investment for a fireworks stand? And can I get somebody to man it? So my mind thinks like that. Now I just got off a a call with, with Nathaniel, who's been my coach and business coach and mentor. He's the one who introduced me to entrepreneurship two years ago. And I was talking to him about it and he's like, yeah, man, you got an entrepreneur mind. You can never go back. So what's next? Um, a couple, well, there's a lot of things next, man. So real quick, I just want to touch on, on one or two things. So you said, um, why are we in business? I'm in business for the same reason you're in business. It's not about how much money am I going to make for a lot of years? I did have that mindset. I just wanted to make money. 
I'm in the business of relationships. That's what my business is. I'm in the business of cultivating long-term relationships. And the amount of money I make is a byproduct of the amount of value that I give to the marketplace, whether it's in heating and cooling, whether it's in real estate, whether it's with bonfire, um, whatever it is. I've had plenty of times in my life where I've gotten large sums of money deposited my accounts through whatever it was, commissions or, you know, big, big pay checks, whatever. The fulfillment that happens when you get money like that is, is so fleeting. You've been there, you know, what feels good is how you impact other people, right. And how you provide for other people. So what's next for me is I want to keep investing in purposeful businesses that are striving to give back and help in some way and solve a problem. I'm super passionate about real estate. I love the art of the deal. I love finding deals and I like also being able to provide housing for people, live free heating, cooling. We're scaling that. And, um, you know, that's a business that I always say like my goals are not for me. I've got a lot of goals. I set goals I set personal goals that are going to help other people. It actually gives me more fire to achieve the goals, right? Um, so live free heating and cooling, you know, my brother's my partner in that and we are scaling that and I'm going to eventually step away completely and he's going to run it. And, um, you know, that's pretty much where I'm at. And as far as like the real estate side of things go, I'm always looking for, for new properties and, um, I just really want to create a lifestyle through my business for my family um, that I desire, you know, and these are the ways that I'm doing it. So um, I guess to answer your question, what's next is I'm focusing on creating several streams of income and, and that's like, I don't want to say it's my primary focus because my primary focus is, is my family. You know, I've got a son and a, a beautiful marriage. Um, you know, those are my primary focuses. And I actually said at the event, and I want to share this because it's important to me to share with your listeners for so many years. Like I was like, Hey, I want to get money. I want to have all these things, these materials. And I realized that the materials were not what filled me up. You know, now I want to have close relationships. I want to have incredible soul filling experiences and it's a lifestyle that I want and I want to give back to others because giving back to others is where I feel that fulfillment. That's what lights me up, you know? So in order for me to do that, I have to be on my a game every single day, right? Like I can't take days off. I, I, I just can't, you know, I can enjoy myself, which I do, but I'm focused every single day with my goals, with my actions, with my words, my affirmations. You can't shut that brain off. You can't. I, I've tried. Dude, I can't. On vacation, I'm still thinking about what, what's next? What am I doing? What am I doing? You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm still on my task list, which is something that you, which I just shared at a mastermind yesterday. Um, it was on procrastination. And I talked, I talked to them about the, the task list that you laid upon me well over a year ago that I consistently do every day, Saturday, Sunday, even if I'm taking a day off, it's on there. Like, yeah. what am I, what am I doing? What's my gratitude? What's on hold? Like I keep my list organized. Um, so Pete, I want to thank you for coming on purpose chasers podcast. And as in usual fact, fashion, the routine that, I that I'm starting is if you could leave one thing with my listeners, and one thing that will resonate with you, what will it be? I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to ethics. And this is a quote that um, comes from a personal mentor of mine, Hal Elrod in his book, the miracle morning. One sentence that he wrote was do the right thing, not the easy thing. Mm. And how we do anything is how we do everything. So words to live by. You dropped Hal, but I want to throw. I didn't. I haven't thrown it out yet, but he's on my. He's on my intended list of guests. So, uh, <laughs> Hal Elrod and Miracle Morning changed my life. Uh, I can't even explain how it changed my life. So he's coming on. He doesn't know it yet, but he knows me. So, um, Pete, awesome. 
awesome to have you on, man. And uh, I look forward to having you on once this thing grows and, and we're touching, touching a lot of lives. So I'll talk to you soon, brother. Awesome. Thank you. That concludes this episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast. I want to thank you guys for tuning in from the depths of my heart. I also want to invite you to head over to my website, markcrandall.net, to see what else I'm up to and to follow me on social. I look forward to meeting you guys on the next episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast and want to leave you with this. Failure is a word reserved by those that quit. You are only limited by what's between your ears. Guys, don't give up. Keep striving harder and kick the door in on mediocrity and live the life of your dreams. Until next time.